everyone and welcome back guys to round 11 and round 12 of the online racing league Scirocco Cup and we're here today for Sonoma and this probably is my best shot of the whole season to get into a lobby. It's a track I'm strong at and also a track with not many long straights obviously so a lot of guys aren't able to pull out a lot of time on myself but coming into qualifying so far this qualifying session it hadn't been particularly good I dirted three of my laps so this is actually the only clean lap I managed to get through in this session and overall it wasn't a particularly brilliant lap it was like four tenths off my pb but we'll see obviously at the end of this run what time i get and also what lobby that will leave me in guys but as i said you know this track probably one of my strongest over on the calendar just, just for the fact that it is a track i do enjoy and as i said no long straights for the manual clutch guys to just be able to absolutely pull away from me but so far i know this season it's been quite up and down you know we've been hovering around sort of b and c lobby and last week we obviously got a bit unlucky with that um, crash down at turn two at Laguna Seca. Obviously, if you want to go check out that video, I would highly recommend going back and doing so. You know, there was some good racing involved in that. And there was also a little bit of a fight for a win in the second race. There's obviously more of an incentive to go back and watch that race. But you can just see coming around halfway around this qualifying lap. You know, it hasn't been a particularly perfect run. But there's also been no real big mistakes so far in this lap. So, you know, it's, it's still looking good. And obviously, this final sector, just about trying to just throw the car in as much as you can. I was really avoiding the curbs on this run. And I kind of wanted to keep it clean as well. And obviously, in this final sector, obviously, if you invalidate, then your next run is also invalidated as well. So, obviously, making sure... You know, we took it with a bit more calmness uh, through that final sector. They probably lost a tenth or two just alone in that final few corners there. But come around the final corner there, running massively wide into the corner there. But we do get good traction out of the final corner that we've seen these front wheel drives. Try and minimise the wheel spin. But as we come up towards the line though, it is going to be a 1 minute 40.303 there. Which did actually leave me just up in A lobby there. P13 out of P14. In A lobby there, and you can just see AMS Roadrunner on pole for the first race of the night. The Pro Captain Slow just next in there. We were actually having a little muck around, and we'd accidentally set it up. So it was manual grid order, and so we were seeing what the streamers would do if we went backwards back through the grid there. But Veeps up in P3 there, was a very strong result for him, with AMS Moshes up in P4 as well. We've got Dwayne the Blade, who actually got pole, had a four place grid penalty there for an instant he'd had last week out. Craviator. Up in P6 nice. there once again, having a very strong show. And FTR Mitch, obviously one of the big surprises from this series so far, up in P7 there. With Prod Force 4, AMG obviously have had some good battles with him. VBR Hayasa, which some of the old school guys might remember from AOR. They're obviously very nice to be racing once again with him. But we've got Renta, Ken Patchy there, down in P11 there. we got EVR Zonda, my teammate there, who actually out-qualified me by 1,000th of a second there. He ran a 302 in quality. There's me, down in P13, unlucky for some. And GTR Tiski down at the very back of the grid for this first race of the evening there but i think we're going to be going at three minute 45 for the first race of the night there and it's lights out and away we go and we actually get off to a very very good start jumping straight past my teammate kai there up for p12 there we just got no wheel spin on that launch there and coming up towards turn one now it's quite crucial you actually want to be on the right hand side into the corner i'm going to try and go late on the brakes try and move past ken patchy as early as we possibly can there and i do now move up into p11 then just about keep the car on the curve, so if you get a wheel over the grass, it will cost you a lot of time on these early stages of this race. So, taking a lot of curb through turn three there and coming over the crest of turn four, you know, kind of just hoping that obviously if we can keep it clean on these first couple of laps, you know, a lot of drivers will make mistakes and there will be a lot of incidents in these early stages there, guys. You can just see AMS Renter and VBR Hayasa just ahead of me here and hopefully, you know, down into the next corner, we're going to try and go behind Hayasa here, try and move past Renter as we come through this long left hander. And it's just about trying to get as early as you can on the power there. And we do now look past AMS Renter. But obviously with that manual clutch, you know, I had a better run. And instantly he equals out with the first gear shift there. But down into the next corner there, Hayasa goes very, very defensive on Renter there. So we're going to try and have a look around the outside of the pair of them there. We aren't able to get past Renter there, I think. But we are side by side with Hayasa down in towards this S section. We're just going to hold it side by side with him. And into the next corner there, he does run a little bit wide. I give him a little bit of contact there. Squeeze him out a little bit over the grass there. Renter tries to go for a move as well. And three wide into that corner isn't going to work out. I somehow go on the grass. But keep him facing the right direction. And now I move up into P9 there. So it's been a very, very strong start for myself in this first race of the evening there. You know, I've already made up four positions on the opening lap against arguably guys that are probably quicker than me on this game. But coming into the final half and I run massively wide there. Hyasa looks for a move. But I am able to hold on to P9 there on the first lap of this race here. You know, hopefully as we move on further on into the race, you can see there's a little train of cars 
just about ahead of me there, and FTR Mitch goes straight into the wall there, completely wiping out Frog Falls of Vault AMG there. No idea what happened between those two guys. I think Mitch just got squeezed out over the curve there, hit the wall, and that's another two free positions for myself there. Very early on in this race, you know, I'm very happy with that. You know, we've already made our way up into halfway through this field, you know, six positions in the opening couple of laps of this race, you know, can't really ask for much more than that, you know. And as you can just see, coming through the final couple of corners there, Hayas are still right yeah. over my gearbox here. And he goes for a late move down the inside into the second to last corner there. He does park it on the apex a little bit there. I tried to go for a bit of an undercut, yes. but he does then make the position stick. There's got Kempachi yeah. leaving the lobby there. Yeah. Unfortunately yeah. for him, his game just kept crashing this evening there, so I'm very unfortunate for him. As obviously, he's not going to be able to use that A lobby to his advantage there. But Hayas are now just about ahead of me here, and you know, Hayas are probably a quicker driver yeah, than myself. In these early stages, so I'm not too worried about if he sort of runs away from me in this first race. So we make a little bit of contact with him there as we go all four wheels well over the curb through turn two there. Probably a little bit of a cheeky corner cut from myself there. But Hayas, you know, he's starting to pull away a little bit of the gap from myself here. You know, he was a much quicker driver in this first race. So I'm going to let him get away. And by the end of the race, you can see we're skipping all the way on to the final lap. And the only real pressure for me was coming behind me from Kai. And obviously we saw last week he's, he's more than happy to go for a bit of a bold dive bomb in these races, you know, if I keep him sort of 60, 70 feet back, then, you know, we should be safe. Coming into the final couple of corners there, if we try and hold it through in fifth gear, they give me better traction on the exit of the corner. We get a wheel over the grass, though, coming down into the final hairpin, though. We do run a little bit wide into the corner there. Kai thinks about going for a move there, but he's not able to get the car far enough alongside. And we do hold on 2P8 there in the first race of the evening. They're obviously very, very happy with that, obviously, you know, Starting from P13 on the grid, that will leave us in a little bit of a lower grid position for the second race. Of, you know, I just want to take him as many points as I possibly can in these races there. And in that first race, I actually was able to move up the most positions of anyone there. So, obviously, very, very happy with that. P13 to P8 there. Five positions made up. And I think Kai was actually second there with four places made up. But I am starting down in P6 for the second race of the evening there. But it's a lights out and away we go. And Kai, therefore, getting the good start. In the second race of the night, he's able to split Tiski and Renta there straight away as he gets held up by Prod 4 for AMG. But coming down in towards turn one, I'm going to try and go late on the brakes there. Tiski sort of trying to back off behind Renta there, and I thought he was going to try and go for the move, so I gave him a little bit of a tap there. But coming now down towards turn three, Hayasa once again trying to look for a move. I go right around the outside of Tiski there as he nearly makes contact with me. And, you know, I just had to sort of avoid him there as we run wide over the rumble strip. Onto the grass, into the next corner there. Just going to try and go as late on the brakes as I possibly can there. And just get caught on the rumble strip once again there. Trying to, you know, lean on Hayasa through the next corner there. But unfortunately for me, he's able to get past me there. And down in towards the next corner there. I tried to hold it down the inside. And they'll try and bail out a little bit there. But Craviator coming through the hairpin. There's a little bit of lag. And unfortunately for me, that sends me into an absolute half spin there. Sends me down into last place there. And not exactly what I wanted. I mean, nothing we can do that with, you know, his New Zealand or his Australian lag. I can't even remember. And unfortunately for me, as I said, that leaves me right at the very back. That we could just see seven or eight cars just ahead of me there, you know, still all going side by side. So, you know, it's definitely not over yet. I've only lost a couple of hundred feet, as you can just see. Moving on to the start of lap three of this race, you can just see Tiski. And I think that's Prod Captain Slow just so ahead of him there. You know, they're still having a little bit of squabble there. Captain Slow, one of the big surprises as well. So far this season, you know, he's been very, very strong. You know, quite surprising to a lot of drivers when you see him up sort of in P3, P4 in qualifying. Then. But we're going to try and line up a move on Tisic there. Because you see, he runs wide. Captain Slow goes over the curbs as well there. You know, they both ruin their runs. I'm going to thread the needle between the pair of them there. Make a wonderful double overtake, if I do say so myself. Then we now move back up into P11 of the race there. So very, very happy with that in the second race of the evening. And it's just about trying to make up as many positions as we can from other people's mistakes once again there. And, you know, coming through the next corner, run a little bit wide there. Tiski's going to be able to get a very, very good run on myself there, as well as Captain Slow. He's going to try and have a look down on the inside into the next corner there. We're just going to try and go, you know, nice and calm on the break. So we give Tiski a little bit of a punt there as Captain Slow. It doesn't give me much room on the inside there, but just a bit of a racing incident, if I do say so myself. Tiski gets caught over the curb. So we're going to try and look side by side through the next couple of corners there and into the part of the S section. I just make a little bit of contact with Tiski there. Nothing we can really do about that. We both agreed, you know, it was a bit of a racing incident there. And obviously, after a little bit of a tap beforehand, you know, I think it's safe to say, you know, he, he was able to keep on to his position there and it's going to be no hard feelings 
about that between the pair of us there. You know, we're still going to try and keep up the pressure on Tiski as we get a very, very good run through the next corner. They'll be thinking about going for a move down the inside into the half, and they're very, very late on the brakes, and Tiski just turns in ever so slightly there, and I think obviously not his fault whatsoever, but, you know, that always, if one of the outside driver turns in just that little bit too early, it really makes the incident look a lot worse than it is, obviously, just means both drivers basically go straight on there as Tiski coming down towards turn one. Try and have a look around the outside there. He goes later on the brakes into the corner there, but can't get the car turned in just in time as I do go for a switchback move on him. Move back up into P12 now of the race here. You know, it's just about trying to hold on to as many positions as we possibly can as you can see, skipping on further on towards the end of lap four of this second race. You know, this second race, one with a lot of action, so you know, there's still a lot more to cover in this race. You know, hoping I can still make up as many positions as I possibly can. But coming now into the final sector of the lap there. You can just see on the mini map there. On the right hand side there's two dots. And two cars there completely parked on the inside there. That's AMS Roadrunner and TUS Veeps there. The two guys that lead in the championship as well. So obviously those two guys. Obviously they'll be a little bit annoyed that they lost out on so many points. But a little happy you know that they've only lost out points to each oh, other there. And you know that should still be alright for those two in the standings there. I think Roadrunner has you know a 70 point advantage coming into this race weekend, and you know, hopefully for him, he shouldn't be able to lose that huge lead that he had already, guys. You can just see, moving on towards the end of lap 5 here, you know, there's still quite a few guys just up ahead of me there, because there's one guy running absolutely wide into the next corner there, and that is AMS Rent there, he's got a huge amount of damage on his car, he's just going to pull off to the side, and I'm going to be able to now move up into P9 of this race here, you know, we're still making up positions, like I said, you know, keeping it clean is the strategy around Sonoma, you know, just let the other drivers around you have their instance there, guys. But coming on to the start of lap six here, as you can see, Tiski, you know, he's not willing to let me go at this moment of time. And I was kind of hoping, you know, we could sort of just try and go single file around this track, you know, hopefully try and catch up with the rest of the field here. But it's clear Tiski has different ideas. As I go massively wide into one of the hairpins there, Tiski able to move straight past me, you know, a fairly textbook move for him, you know. And, you know, hopefully, if obviously I can still apply the pressure on Tiski, you know, P9 still definitely on the cars in this race. You know, maybe if we see a couple more instances between a few drivers further up the road, you know, we could still be looking at a strong result in this second race of the evening then, guys. You can see moving on one lap later, you know, we're still piling on the pressure with Tiski. I was probably the only driver, you know, that was consistently just as quick as him around here, obviously, with the manual with clutch that he is running there. But there's actually a car just a ahead of him there. You can see it's the yellow and red car. I think it might actually be Craviator there. So the guy that lag took me out in the early phases of this race now as well got a huge amount of damage in the second part of this race there. And Tiski now, as we come into the S section, is going to have to try and navigate him as well. I'm just hoping, you know, that they can both try and, you know, get into each other's way, you know, tangle over each other. And I can try and get past the pair of them here. But Tiski does it very, very well as we come into the next corner there. Able to move straight past Cravier there. I'll be able to go right around his outside as well, you know, trying to give him a little bit of space to avoid that lag punt there. But coming into the next couple of corners there, Tiski not able to get a very, very good run through this second to last corner there. So, you know, hopefully for me, if I can line up and move on him... On this oh second to last, or maybe last lap of the race, there, I could try and make up a position on Tiski there. And up into P8, we could now be looking at in this second race of the it's night, sir. So, so two P8s in A lobby there, I'd be very, very happy with that. I think that would equal out about 320 points in this in this race weekend overall there. So very, very happy with that. If I can make that work, as you could just see, skipping on to the second last lap of the race. We've got Tiski just ahead of you. So we're going to try and think about going for a move. Down the inside into the hairpin. Then we just try and get the front end alongside him there. But he does try and defend from it very, very well. And into the next couple of corners there. He is going to be able to hold on 2p8 from myself there. You know, coming into the S section. This is really where I feel strong in comparison to Tiski there. And coming into these couple of corners. You know, break a little bit early. Try and go slow in fast out there. And unfortunately, that hasn't paid off for myself. Tiski able to pull away sort of a 30 feet advantage over myself there. But coming into the next corner... We do take it very, very nicely. They get a very, very good run. And Tiski is going to not be able to get such a good run. Then we're going to be side by side down towards the hairpin there. Down the inside we go into the corner there. We're just going to try and hold it nicely on the corner there. Using the rumble strip on the inside to grip the car up even more there. And we now move back up into P8 of the race there. But Tiski is definitely not going to let this slide. He gives me a little bit of a tap there. Gives the car an absolutely huge dent as we come through the final corner there. Obviously not really too sure. Nice falls of damage system there. Coming down in towards turn one. Tiski thinks about going for a move. But we're very late on the brakes there. And we do hold on 2p8 overall in the second race of the evening. Just see skipping on right to the very end of the race there. Tiski's dropped back 
ever so slightly from myself, so we don't need to worry about him in these final couple of corners of the race. He gets very, very close to me through the final corner there, but with the traction on the exit there, we do hold on 2p8 for the second race of the night there. So 2p8s overall, very, very happy with that result. Obviously, as I said, 320 points overall so far from that eve there. So obviously my best points haul of the whole series so far. You can just see FTR Mitch did win that second race there with one of the AMS guys, I think, don't actually count. Sorry, no, that was Prod Falls for AMG who managed to get P2 there even. So very, very solid results for those two guys there. My teammate Evr Zonda getting up in sixth place there in the second race of the evening there. So two very strong results for Evr there, guys. But hopefully, you know, you guys have enjoyed this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe, obviously, if you are new around here. Obviously, if you are interested in more of these online racing in Scirocco Cup videos, guys. But hopefully, you know... As I said, you have enjoyed. If you do want to go check out the other races, I would highly recommend doing so. But I will see you guys next time for a brand new video. Promise that you'll catch me.